In this video, I'm going to explain to you the Kubernetes architecture. Now, Kubernetes has these uh, master and the nodes. The clients or the workers are called as nodes in Kubernetes terminology. And uh, the big box that you see here is the master. Now, Kubernetes master contains many components starting with the API server. API server is the interface to the outside world. So anyone who wants to talk to the API Kubernetes uh, in environment has to go through the API server. It could be the users, it could be the Kubernetes dashboards, uh, or it could be any third party application. Let's say OpenShift sits on top of Kubernetes, so it has to go through the API server in order to leverage the Kubernetes uh, functionalities. Even the nodes, talk to the API server. There's a component from the node, which we're going to look at later, which talks to the API server. API server coordinates with all the other components and then gets things done. The second component, which is also very important, is the scheduler. Now, let's look at what scheduler actually does. So when you want to launch your container-based workloads, you may have, you know, maybe hundreds of nodes in your cluster. So how do you decide which container runs on which node that you have. Now for that, you may have multiple constraints. So you may want to run a particular type of work workloads on particular type of nodes, maybe CPU intensive operations on uh, CPU optimized uh, machines and so on. Or you may have constraints, you may have, uh, def you may define affinities and so on. So scheduler is the one which provides the intelligence and makes those decisions for you intelligently and decides where to run which container. The job is simple. The next component is the controller manager. Now controllers are the ones who are responsible for providing the application deployment, the way the containers are launched, the way they scale, and uh, the way they are deployed, the ver new versions of it, and so on, right? And then there are many different controllers which are available inside Kubernetes. So when you want to run those multiple replicas and run your application with high availability, it is the controller-like deployment which provides you with that. The replication, uh, scaling, and uh, the strategy to go from one version to another uh, is all defined and controlled by the controllers. And then there are different controllers that Kubernetes has for different types of workloads. Let's have a look at those. So when you want to run those stateless applications, typically your application servers uh, and so on with high availability, you would use a controller by name deployment. When you want to run agents, let's say you want to run monitoring agents, you want to run something on every node in your cluster, you would use something called as a daemon set. Daemon set guarantees that you run one node, one instance of that application on every node. When you want to run stateful applications like databases and so on, um, you know, where you need um, the persistent storage and certain way of deploying those and so on, uh, you would use stateful sets. To run ad hoc jobs, you would use the controller called as jobs, uh, which is run to completion. And when you want to run cron jobs, there is a controller for it too. Now, Kubernetes actually, even though there are different controllers, all of those are compiled into one single binary. And that is the controller manager component that you see running on your Kubernetes master. So all of these are combined into the controller manager. And the one you saw in the architecture earlier is this component. That's the one, that's the controller manager. So we talked about API server, the scheduler, controller manager, and now we're gonna look at uh, one of the most important aspects and the component of Kubernetes, the brain of Kubernetes, that is the HCD. Why I call, um, uh, it's not really the brain because it's more like a storage. Uh, the intelligence is provided by controllers and schedulers and so on. But the state of the cluster is stored in this database. It's a key value pair database called as ETCD. Also typically pronounced as HCD. It's a key value pair and the entire state. So any configuration changes that you make, any objects that you create are first stored in HCD. So when you talk to the API server, it actually makes an entry in the HCD server first 
you know and uh, then when you want to you know even set up your control plane with high availability the kubernetes masters with high availability first you go and set up a cluster of hcd with minimum of three nodes and that is the one which is going to give you the high availability and then you can talk to any you know hcd node and uh, these hcd nodes talk to each other with a protocol called as raft raft is a distributed consensus protocol that is needed because any configuration that you store in any of that CD node has to be propagated and uh, stored in all of these nodes that's why that's how you get high availability now the fault tolerance formula for HCD is 2n plus 1 that's why we need 3 or 5 and so on because if you want to tolerate one node failure you need 2 into 1 plus 1 that is 3 nodes of HCD that's why I show 3 nodes here if you want to tolerate 2 node failures you need 5 nodes of HCD and if you want to tolerate 3 node failure of HCD you need 7 typically you would create maximum 7 HCDs because there is a lot of data which travels between HCDs for every change every you know commit every update which happens in um, you know kubernetes cluster so anything beyond seven becomes uh, makes the cluster slow itself and for high availability hcd is the most important component here now that's part of the master node let's look at what components run on the nodes every node which participates in the cluster which is run as a worker or which is responsible for running containers runs a process called as kubelet kubelet is sort of the agent of that Kubernetes um, uh, cluster and that's the one which talks to the API server and then talks to the runtime and gets the job done. A runtime could be your typically container daemons like Docker for example. Docker is the most popular one but Kubernetes works with any of these. Kubernetes can work with Rocket uh, created by CoreOS, RunC which is the underlying technology or Cryo which is the newer uh, you know closely integrated runtime for kubernetes and that's how the containers are launched and run and managed by kubelet so kubelet is responsible to talk to the api server and then get the work done locally also do the health checks and so on and that's what you run on every single node that participates in the cluster Every node that runs on, uh, you know, inside a cluster has a kubelet, has the Docker runtime. And then there is one more service called as kube proxy. We'll talk, talk about kube proxy when we, you know, start talking about the services, Kubernetes services, that is. Now, this is how it works, right? So when you, let's say, as a user, uh, connect to the API server on the master and run something, let's say kube CTL run or kube cattle apply, uh, it actually... Uh, get scheduled the scheduler decide which node uh, it's going to run on and that node's kubelet is then informed about the new container to be run on it and then the kubelet will talk to the local container runtime whatever it is configured with the kubelet that is uh, most likely it is going to be docker uh, but it could be any of the runtime that kubernetes supports so kubelet then talks to the runtime and say asks it to run the actual container and uh, that's how your containers are launched in the kubernetes environment on those nodes and not only that kubelet then keeps on doing the probes probes are way to def do the health checks and there are a couple of probes uh, that are available and that's how kubelet decides whether the containers are available or not and then it you know keeps on monitoring for it and then is, you know informs back to the master if there are any you know any any issues with the containers and this is how the communication between the api server the kubelet and the container runtime happens uh, one more thing to add is even on the masters you would typically see those client services run those that include kubelet docker and kube proxy because most of the control plane services those controller manager hcd api server scheduler are run as containers as well or can be run as containers so you will see those services run on the master too in addition to this there are certain add-ons which uh, even though they were called as add-ons earlier have become an essential part of uh, the kubernetes environment that includes the dns service uh, which you would see run 
inside your cluster, possibly multiple instances of the DNS server. Second is the CNI, that is for the networking. You will essentially need, would need to network your containers running on different hosts. And for that, you would have to set up those CNI plugin components such as Flannel, Weave, Calico, and so on. So you're gonna see those containers or the pods running for the CNI plugins as well. So in addition to the scheduler API server controller manager at CD, uh, you are going to see DNS and the networking components as part of the control plane. That's the Kubernetes architecture.